our next corporate presentation will be Snowline Gold. Uh, Snowline has some very exciting drill results over the last little while from their key flagship project, Rogue. And with us today and presenting will be Mr. Scott Burdahl, CEO of the company. Scott. Do I press something to get the uh, slides up? Okay. <clears throat> um, well, I, I mean, I can start the talk anyway without visuals. Um, Snowline Gold is, uh, is a Yukon-based, Yukon-focused company in northwestern Canada. Uh, we are focused on greenfield gold, uh, so discovery stage um, gold assets across the territory. The company comes out of uh, more than 30 years of prospecting in the territory, started by my father. Uh, when I was a little kid, he would drag me out into the wilderness and, uh, and we'd go and look for gold. Uh, pretty strange thing to do, but uh, over the years, uh, we uh, had some successes and uh, we started to accumulate really high quality projects. And uh, of course, we had a lot of misses too, but uh, over a long period of time, you get to try a lot of ideas. And, uh, and so over the relative doldrums of the past 10 years, um, the, uh, we were unable to really advance these projects. There was no junior market to sell them into. And so we were, suddenly had a backlog of these very quality assets with a lot of good data uh, pointing to really a gold district that just didn't exist uh, or that hasn't been explored before. And so uh, ultimately, you know, the way forward was to uh, launch these into a company. And so that company is now Snowline. Um, we, uh, we've launched in uh, March of 2021, so we're just a year and a half old now. But uh, I think our track record shows that that, uh, that backstory, it's more than just a fun backstory of prospectors in the Yukon. It actually has material impact in terms of our ability to produce discoveries quickly because we've done the legwork. Uh, these have, uh, we, you know, we've concentrated what we have in, our, in terms of our projects. And um, essentially, uh, on launch last year, we, we secured this uh, district scale area in the northwestern Yukon. Here we go. Um, I guess those were all rear looking statements. I'll, I'll now switch to forward looking statements. And uh, so yeah, there's, there's me uh, in the bottom picture. There's my dad. Uh, yeah, uh, spent a long time uh, exploring in the Yukon and, and we rolled seven projects out into um, uh, into Snowline. Uh, we recently acquired the Golden Oli project, so that's an eighth project, uh, or you could call it uh, 10 more projects, really. That was a large package that uh, we acquired based on the success that we're having on our Valley target, which is on the Rogue project. So you can see in the Eastern Yukon, that Einerson and Rogue area is really where we have uh, focused most of our exploration so far. This is a shot of the discovery outcrop at our Valley target on the Rogue project. This is uh, that, the edge of an intrusion. You can see the rocks in the creek there are basically like a granite. And uh, behind that are sedimentary rocks that have been cooked by that granite. And those quartz veins cutting through are, uh, are a reduced intrusion related gold system. So similar to the Eagle Mine that you just saw with Victoria Gold, uh, this is uh, a big bulk tonnage target. But uh, what's unusual about Valley is the density of those veins. And so where these systems are typically subgram, just big projects with good economics, uh, good, good metallurgy, uh, good consistency, and so on that make it work. We're seeing grades that are a gram plus, two grams plus, and so uh, that has us really excited. And also, just stepping back and looking at the district scale picture, what has us excited is that this is a, a district that we was theoretical when we launched the company a year and a half ago. Uh, we now have more than a, a quarter million hectares of land there, and uh, we're walking up creeks and finding what might be what we think might be tier one uh, gold assets sticking out of the ground, just like this. And uh, we made another drill discovery on another target, uh, again, with mineralization just coming out of the ground, finding it on surface, finding things that people hadn't seen before. Where, where was this taken? That's Valley. That's right at the edge of and Valley. When was this photo taken? Uh, the question, when was that photo taken? That was uh, two months ago, September. Okay. <clears throat> Actually, that's probably October, I mean, August, based on the, the green leaves. But, uh, and so I, I guess your question as investors, your broader question is, you know, is this a mine or what does that look like? Like is Snowline a company worth investing in? And um, 
Uh, so ultimately, to, to answer that question, I'm just going to quickly run you through uh, Doug Casey's nine Ps that you look for in a company. And I think that uh, you know it's, it goes beyond just the rocks. Uh, there are a lot of factors that, that go into uh, building uh, a mine or, or finding a mine. So the first is people. And we've, uh, I think the other reason that we've been able to sort of spring load into, uh, into discovery is the team that we've put together. Uh, this group has gotten a lot done very quickly. Uh, it's a team that has a lot of experience, but uh, is still very young and very hungry. And so uh, our management team has done incredible things in the past year and a half. And uh, as well, our board is uh, diverse, uh, multifaceted, diverse in terms of their backgrounds and what they bring to the table, um, and very engaged, uh, very good board, lots of constructive discussions. And I'll just point out our, our chair, Craig Hart, actually wrote the book on uh, reduced intrusion-related gold systems, which is what Eagle is, which is what our valley target is. Uh, the projects, as I mentioned, we are focused on basically a, a new district. Uh, and uh, the, um, within that, you can see the valley drill discovery. We've, we've drilled three targets in this district now as a company. All three of them phase one drill programs on never before drilled targets. All three of them hit uh, visible gold in these uh, phase one programs. So that's, uh, as far as I know, unheard of. Uh, as a prospect, I know it's very hard to find uh, a new instance of visible gold. And so to hit three for three on drill programs has us uh, very excited about the potential of this broader district. But uh, I'll focus in now on Valley, which is what's really driving the story at present. And so I've made my own list of, of what makes a project uh, worthwhile, and that's scale, grade, continuity, the actual mine type, you know, is it going to work, and the metallurgy. Valley has scale. Uh, we've outlined through uh, just looking at the vein densities. You recall in that outcrop picture, it just comes down to how many of those quartz veins you see cutting through the granite in a given meter. And, uh, and so we've mapped that out. Um, and we've uh, defined an area that's maybe 500 meters long, three or 400 meters wide. We've seen veins down to depths of over 700 meters. Uh, and uh, so, you know, we've, we've done a lot of drilling there this season, but we're still just getting started. Uh, but that's a, a lot of, a, a very large volume of mineralized rock. The grades, as I mentioned, are impressive and uh, unprecedented for this kind of a deposit. Uh, uh, showing there is uh, our whole 10. Uh, 319 meters at 2.5 grams per ton. The top 108 meters of that hole uh, average 4.1 grams per ton, and that's not heavily influenced by, uh, by outliers. It's, uh, it's basically just consistent, consistent mineralization. 72% of the samples in that top 108 meters were more than uh, 2 grams per ton. The continuity, and I think this gets overlooked, but uh, I guess going back to that statistic, 72% of uh, that top 108 meters being more than 2 grams per ton and uh, if you look back at uh, you know, these uh, holes 14 and holes 7, um, hole 10 is, uh, is uh, 160 plus meters away from these. Those two holes are 165 meters apart. Uh, we're seeing great continuity both within and between holes, and that's how you build ounces quickly. The geometry, one thing you'll note is that uh, that 108 meters on the previous slide is right near surface. That starts from surface. We have great grades right at the start. Um, at uh, Arequipa, uh, the Pierre, uh, Pierina uh, discovery, there was a, a zone called Payback Hill because it had great grades right near surface, very low strip ratio. Uh, we basically have you know, Payback Valley uh, with our, our best grades right near surface. And then the geometry of it is such in, the, in a big, broad, flat valley bottom that we should be able to uh, access a lot of the drill discovery that we've made so far with uh, fairly conservative pit design um, and, uh, and a very low strip ratio. And then beyond that, the two ground plus opens the door to underground development. So if there are deep parts of the system, and often these systems do go very deep, uh, you know, that is uh, potentially on the table as well, which uh, might not add to the NPV up front, but it adds to the attractiveness of the target. <coughs> the metallurgy. Uh, we have just uh, brought on a consultant to do proper metallurgical work. We've yet to start, but again, looking over the fence at other systems of this type, uh, generally very well behaved. Uh, good recovery from gravity, good recovery from leaching. Uh, we have grades enough to potentially put uh, together some circuits or carbon in situ leach, that kind of a thing. Um, and, you know, looking at, uh, at Fort Knox in Alaska, for example, uh, they're mining right now at a 0.3 gram per ton grade with a 0.1 gram per ton cutoff in a gold only system. So that shows how the metallurgy just allows these to work. And uh, we haven't seen anything that uh, makes us think that ours will be any different, but of course we're uh, launching to that metallurgy uh, soon so that we'll know. Paper. Uh, we have a tight share structure, relatively speaking. We have 130 million shares out, 150 fully diluted. Um, and a lot of that is in strong hands, strong supporters of the company who have been 
uh, active in the company, including uh, myself and, and my family company, uh, some of our supporters, Keith Newmeyer, Crestcat Capital, uh, and others who have put a lot of uh, resources into the company and, and come up again and again and have not sold a share. So um, yeah, we, we have a, a very nice structure going forward. So uh, jumping ahead to promotion, financing, and politics. I guess Doug got uh, creative with the fitting financing into there, but uh, it works. Uh, promotion, which is, uh, I guess, a double-edged sword and a bit of a dirty word in the industry, but uh, ultimately, we know that we have to uh, tell our story, but uh, we know that there's a line there, and uh, we really try to focus on earned attention. So if you see something written about Snowline, you know that that person is just saying what they think. Um, and, you know, we try to get ourselves out there. We brought, instead of hiring firms, we've hired uh, Stephanie Hansen, uh, who has done a great job of uh, managing our social media, uh, getting me out there, dragging me to these conferences, getting me up here to talk to all of you. And so, uh, you know, we're, we're working to get our story uh, out there in a responsible way, but an effective way, and that's working. And we've picked up a preliminary coverage from several analysts, including Michael Gray, Brock Colterjohn, and Brendan Gaspar. So uh, the message is starting to, to take hold. Our financing, we're, we're well financed with that $24 million in the treasury at the moment. Uh, we have uh, about $20 million worth of warrants in the money, uh, and a lot of those are in those strong hands that I mentioned earlier. So, uh, well, often people are worried about warrant overhangs, and certainly that could be a factor here where uh, we really don't think that it is. Politics, we're in the Yukon Territory, a Tier 1 jurisdiction, uh, northwestern Canada. Uh, recently ranked number 9 globally as far as mining jurisdictions go by the Fraser Institute. Um, we're in the traditional territory of the Nacho Naikdan First Nation, uh, who have a, a long history with mining, uh, notably Eagle, the uh, Victoria Gold, the presentation we just saw. Uh, they're also in the First Nation of Nacho Naikdan traditional territory, as is uh, Hecla's uh, recent acquisition of Alexco. So there are two operating mines uh, in the territory now, and, uh, and others, well, in the broader Yukon territory, we have that two of the three are in that traditional territory, and then uh, others are are progressing through permitting in the Yukon. So it's a place where things can happen. And finally, uh, push, the pitfalls, and the price. Push being, you know, why invest, uh, why invest in Snowline now? What's the near-term upside? And the near-term upside, I think, is uh, substantial in that we drilled over 11,000 meters at our valley target this year. Uh, we've only received assays on about 25% of that, and uh, we drilled another target as well, which uh, we, we haven't received any assays, so we're still waiting on 80% uh, of our assays from this season. Uh, and the assays that we do have paint a very compelling picture, as I uh, spoke of earlier with the grades that we're seeing. So you can see all those uh, sticks on that area um, are, are holes that we're still waiting for. And again, this, uh, this zone, uh, when we look at the visual results, all those little stars are visible gold in drill core. And so we're seeing holes with literally, uh, well, well, dozens or even uh, 100 or more instances of visible gold within a given hole. Um, and so that uh, bodes very well, especially when we see now in the results that we do have back, how that translates into um, actual results. And so this is hanging together in a very exciting way. Uh, I mentioned we drilled another target, Gracie to the east. Uh, we drilled five holes there. We've hit visible gold in four out of the five. We haven't found the intrusion. We're targeting a similar system to Valley, but it doesn't daylight like Valley does. It's still, uh, still buried, which is actually uh, appealing in a lot of ways because the tops of these systems are often the most fertile, and so uh, Gracie, we have an intact uh, prize there, potentially, if we can find it, but, but uh, seeing visible gold in the Hornfels in the altered rocks right around the intrusion is a very good start. Um, potential pitfalls, um, of course, our location is, uh, we are exp we're finding these things sticking out of the ground because we went to an area that others have, been, have not been to before, and so uh, it's remote, but it's not, uh, it's not wildly inaccessible. Um, we have uh, a winter trail that goes to within 30 kilometers of the valley zone, and, uh, and that connects to a, a government-maintained road that has upgrades coming to it. Um, permitting, of course, advanced stage permitting, we've already actually uh, started on uh, environmental baseline work to, to compress that timeline and to uh, ensure that uh, you know, this project can actually go ahead. Uh, and finally, the price. The price referring not to the stock, but to the commodity in general. And uh, this is really proving to be based on the continuity, based on the scale that we're seeing, and based on the grades we're seeing, uh, it looks like the type of deposit that doesn't really depend so much on the price of gold. Uh, so we're not you know, crossing our fingers and 
and uh, going on about $4,000 gold. This is something that could conceivably work at $1,200 gold. Um, I hope. Okay. Oh, yeah. Nine seconds left. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks a lot. We have one last question, quick. Um, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think you just have to look at the scale potential and look at the grades that we have. And, uh, you know, we think that we're onto something uh, pretty special where, uh, you know, I, I think Victoria Gold has done an incredible thing and, uh, and is doing a great proof of concept. Uh, you know, but the, the average grade of that system is, is 0.65. Uh, we don't know what our average grade is yet, but we're hitting huge intervals of two grams plus. Uh, so uh, I think when it comes down to, you know, value per ton of ore removed and also overall uh, size of the system, uh, we're in a very competitive place. Thank you. That's right. We're on the CSC. Uh, we're we're always reevaluating. Right now, it's uh, it's serving our purposes. But I recognize that uh, we may be able to access a, a broader audience with uh, a bump to the TSX. So that's something that we're uh, constantly uh, reviewing.